Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to What's on Your Mind Wednesday Live. Today is um, today we're going to talk about. We have two questions. I have two people um, that I intend to mentor here today this evening. I'm sorry, I'm coming a bit late. Uh, it's just had to do with some of our our systems here. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you on Facebook, welcome. Um, and on, on Instagram, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, that came in um, during the course of the we um, last week we had we had a lot of things that we discussed here um, and today I have two questions um, two people I want to try and see how we can um, we can we can discuss and help them as well um, so if you have questions for those of you that are just coming in if there are questions that you want to ask um, you feel free if I have the time I will answer it if not I will answer it next week. Okay, so I will just go ahead and just go in to, to answer some of those questions. But why is it important that we do this? It's important that we do this because, because um, like I always say, this started during the lockdown um, last year and a lot of people were confused. Um, a lot of people were confused in, in what to do, how to do it. And we got a lot of messages asking questions and we couldn't respond to everybody one after the other. And we decided that um, instead of responding one person at a time, why don't we just, um, just respond to one person, but let it be to one person, but a lot of people will benefit um, as well. And um, so this, this is the reason why we started this to help someone, a lot of testimonies I've come out of this. Um, someone on the verge of committing suicide changed their mind. And it's all because they had um, the answers I gave to someone. And that answer was what helped them come out of it. It's one of the greatest testimonies that we've gotten since we started this program. This is the second time it's happening to me. The first time I spoke at a church and a lady much a few years later told me that she was on the verge of committing suicide and I spoke and um, she changed her mind. The same thing also happened um, um, sometime early this year that someone directed um, somebody that was that was going through depression and, um, and, and um, that person went to my YouTube channel, listened to some of the things that I said and and right there she changed her mind and she has bounced bounce back and we give god the glory so this evening i will just go ahead and just begin to answer the questions as i will share some information with you later i have um, a question from smart smart is from the city of owere in southeast nigeria and smart says Thank you for your time, sir. I work as a tiler. I work as a tiler, and my issue is that clients, um, that clients most times delay my balance. I usually take a percentage to start the job, and when I finish, I have to run around for weeks before I get um, my balance. Of the ones who finally pay me, some of them even shot me, and I don't have a violent or aggressive nature, so I just leave it for them. How can I limit this kind of experiences? Okay, smart. I think that the way you see yourself is the way people will see you, okay? The way you see yourself is the way people will see you. And um, clients, you know, some clients are just out there to, Everybody is weighing and, and trying to gauge you and trying to look at the kind of person you are 
Um, I think most clients feel that you're ripping them off. So any opportunity for them to get back at you, they are difficult clients. I think um, certain things need to change. Um, certain things need to change in your business. First of all, you need to rebrand rebrand yourself and your business. You know, and what do I mean by rebrand yourself? Let them not look for, look at you as a roadside tiler. I think you should do you should you should do a complimentary card. You should do a flyer, something to show your past jobs. Let people see you as more than that roadside person that is looking for a quick buck. So perhaps, I don't know, I'm not in their minds. Perhaps they're looking at you that they're even giving, doing you a favor by, by you. Uh, without me, you won't be able to eat today. So maybe they're looking at you and say, okay, let's just help this man. Or the price at which you're giving them is so high and they feel that, some might feel that way, um, that the price you're giving them is so high and so um, they won't pay your balance. See, you meet, when you are in business, you should, you should, you should by now, you should know the different kinds of customers um, that you have. What I will tell you is that you should have a, a customized rate. You should have a customized rate. When you go to some places, to some shops, or you call people, they give you their rate. So this is our rate. It is written. And you can do things like incentive. Um, you, can, you can give incentives. Um, if you pay me all, I can, I can give you a discount. If you pay all, you get a discount. Or if somebody doesn't trust you. You see, the, the thing is to try as much as possible to, um, to, to, to quench every form of suspicion. Is it the way you talk? Is it the way you carry yourself? I don't know what they are perceiving. But these customers are obviously perceiving something that is making you look as if, uh, making, uh, making it look as if they're doing you a favor. Maybe you are not honest or one thing or the other. Or human beings are always like that. Human beings too are not honest. So what I would advise is that give incentive. If you pay me or I will give you this incentive um, because because you know you just come up with things to get your money up front. But the quickest and easiest way is you give 20%, you ask for 80% advance payment. Uh, before I come to, to that, you can you can, if a customer is struggling with the issue of trust, you can tell them and say, look, this is the tiles. I won't buy the tiles for you go and buy the part tiles and just pay me for my workmanship. And you tell, I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to pay my workers. So if you're going, if it's going to take you three days to do that, if it's going to take you um, three days to do the job, uh, you can ask for 10,000 Naira per day. So if it's 30,000 and the job is going to take three days, Hey, guy, I need to pay my workers. Is either he gives you the money up front, or if he's not giving you the money, then tell him whatever suits him. Because when suspicion is at play, instead of losing the customer itself, the customer as a whole, why don't you negotiate with this customer and come up with, uh, um, negotiate with the customer and come up with some form of, um, agreement that is suitable um, for, for all of you. And that is, you buy the tiles, just pay me for my labor. You negotiate the labor and tell him, look, you know, and that's also where um, people that do your job find, make profit. Just leave, you know, some people who want to make profit on both the labor and both the tiles. If you can't do that, then let them buy it, they pay you for it. And you pay, if it doesn't pay you that day, you don't do your work that day until it pays you. In that way, you have your money up front before you do what you need to do. Because there are some difficult clients, but you also have a family to, you also have a family to, to take care of. Either way, don't hold on to um, so many things. Negotiate. I think part of it is negotiating. 
Then if you if they want to do the advance uh, payment, let them give you 80% of the money and let the 80% of the money be your complete money. Then the other 20%, if they want to, however they want to stagger it, you have made your profit that you want. Why do I say that? Let me tell you, there's a cost of funds. If you borrow money from the bank, there's a cost of funds. What if you borrowed money from bank to do that, to open shop? Are you not going to be paying interest? So if somebody is owing you uh, for a long time, it's just the same um, principle applies, that they pay a commission for every day or for every month. See, if you're supplying to a small business, uh, a small company, um, if they want to owe you, they can't owe you more than one week. Some you tell them you can't owe me more than three days. But if the oil companies are owing you, they normally do 90 days, 60 days, 30 days. It's okay because you build the, that cost. If you're going to use money to go and make supplies to these companies, then you have to build the cost of funds into it. So if you borrowed money, by the time they are paying you, when you pay back, you still have profits. So the same way, if somebody is going to hold down your money, then that person also needs to pay you for that. That's why it cannot be the same rate. You can't, you can't work for someone that is going to pay you and chances are that is not even going to pay you and you, you charge the same amount as the one that is going to pay you at the end of the day. Then it doesn't make sense. Then it doesn't make sense. If the man is suspicious, fine, let him buy the tires himself. Then you charge for your labor. What will take you, because there is what will take you two days to do. You can tell him, I, I'm going to do it in four days time. I'm going to use four days to do it. You guys negotiate because you are in business to make profit. Then he gives you the labor and each day let him pay you you pay your workers. You tell them you know that construction site workers can be violent. If you don't pay me, I can't pay them. So you get your money and you pay for the day. If it doesn't pay for the next day, you leave it. And at, the, at that point, you are at his mercy because he will call you to finish the job. If he gets somebody else to finish the job, he's still also going to pay that person. You need to be strict in collecting your money. If you have a customer that you have had a good deal with the customer, a good relationship with the customer, yeah, you can do 60, 40, 70, 30, you know that the customer will pay. But give them a timeline. Sir, I'm a self-employed. This is how I use. Let them know that you need the funds. Let them realize that you need that funds to do what you need to do. See, I have a family to feed. I need this money. Let them know. Please pay me. I can't wait for three days, one week. I can't wait forever. There has to be a plan. If you need to write it down, you don't even need to type it. If you want to have an agreement, whatever you need to do, um, sir, let's just write um, to so, 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 and so will pay me for the job, this and this, you give me 70%. A small sheet of paper is, 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 is okay. And at, when you finish your job, they give it to you. It's simple. It's an agreement. It's an MOU. You might be saying, I don't have money for a lawyer. I don't have this, that, that. But that's not. MOU can be handwritten. The law, the, the courts will take it handwritten as long as both of you sign. Maybe you need to write those things, whatever the agreement, you put it down and two of you sign so that you have a copy. So that if you want to take it up, you have an evidence. So because you can't allow people to be doing that I've dealt with two things now with you. If they don't trust you, let them buy the material. And if they want you to do, if they want you to do everything, then let them give you, uh, give them 80% discount, which is actually 100% of your money. Then the other 20% will be cost of those funds since they want to go that way. But make sure you collect your money upfront. If anybody you see, the, the important thing is that you, the money needs to be coming in. So you can't be rigid. You know, you're asking me, you can't be rigid in business. You have to be flexible. You have to deal with each, each issue based 
you have to deal with each issue based on what that issue presents, how that issue presents itself. So whichever client, however they come, you respond to them based on however they come, based on however they, they present themselves. But you need to know that money, except you have other sources of income. That you say violent or aggressive, you don't need to be violent or aggressive um, in any way. You just need to have strategy. You just need to have the right strategy for you to get your money back. Deal with them one after the other. I wish I would be there when you're negotiating with cost, uh, customers. As they come, you deal with them. But you know, in your business, cash is king. Without cash, this type of business is based on clients. You need to move on to other businesses and you cannot afford for people to owe you. And don't give impression. Don't give anybody impression that they can owe you for a long time. They can only owe you for the duration of the work. And if it's over, you need your money because you're a Tyler. You are, you are a startup. You are, you, are a small, you, are, you are a small company. So you can't afford people to be owing you. These things should be written down and you write it down. Even if it's an exercise book, you put as long as they sign, they will understand the importance of that signing and they will pay you your money. You know, without that, don't take any job when the agreement is not full. If you don't trust that person, put it in writing. If the person doesn't trust you, let him pay you for labor. But at the end of the day, you are earning, which is the important thing um, that I need to. Uh, if you have more questions, please rebrand yourself. Stop making people look at you as if you're a small time person. You know, you also need to talk about yourself in a way that people will respect you. You talk about yourself, your past jobs, the things that you have done. You know, you, you also need to up your game in terms of who you are. You also need to blow your trumpet, how good you are. You know, when, you, when people see that you are dependable, that you are talking and you are confident with what you do, then when you ask for your money, they won't withhold it. So you also need to brand yourself and speak about yourself in such a way that people will take you seriously. I hope smart that I have helped you um, today. Um, let me go to the next question. It's from Sheung, um, Sheung Maryland. Sheung says that, good evening, sir. My husband and I use a non-violence approach to raise our child and it's been working for us. Now he's, he's four now. My husband's mom shows up and hits my son for the first time in the name of discipline. After this, my son has been a lot more difficult to tame with words. It's almost as though he now craves the beating and my mother-in-law is not saying how she may have altered the course of my parenting. Okay, my husband is not around as is not as around as I am, so he's not feeling the impact of this matter. What ideas can you give me to deal with this unique situation? It is unique. Um, it's indeed unique, and it's also um, very delicate, but it's not impossible. Um, the thing is that I will say is that the um, discipline is the sole responsibility. Um, discipline training is the sole responsibility of um, the parents. Um, Mother-in-law, um, grandparents can support, grandparents can, um, grandparents can um, advise, but it's your sole responsibility. And, and I think that this calls for some form of discussion between you and your husband. See, when there is no plan in place, when there's no plan in, in place, what happens is that anything goes. When there's no unity, you see, even if you have kids and those kids begin to grow, um, if husband and wife are not united, those kids will want to be, they will be playing you. I have grown up kids, teenagers, 
Um, if they know that you will not listen to what they are saying, they will go to their mom. Um, they know the things they come to me, they know the things they come to, to my wife. So when they do that, we we'll just laugh. I will send them right back to my to their mom and I say, go to your mom. And they'll say, no, she's not going to agree. I said, if she's not going to agree, then I think you need to ask her again. Every time they come with that request, like they know maybe um, their mom is not around, I accepted something, and the mom comes back and say that, look, um, this is what, this is what, uh, this is why I didn't, okay, fine. I, when they come, I say, you know that that's not my department. I cannot go to your mom. And they don't like to hear that. I keep pushing them. When they see the husband and wife, they are united in something, um, in something, those children will drop that idea. The same thing applies. The same thing, I think, is first of all, the responsibility of your husband to be able to speak to his mother concerning the way uh, the child is being trained. And uh, I remember growing, um, um, when my kids were growing up, when my mother-in-law and my mom came, you know, they always asked. Um, they were, because of the way the pep talk we've given them, you know, they will ask, and so what do you do when this happens? What do you do? They don't take some certain major decisions, except we are not at home. You know, and even if we're not, they're going to also come, you know, they're going to ask. This is, you're Maryland, you're in US, even in the society there doesn't believe in, sp in spanking or discipline or that kind of discipline of heating. So I think that um, the first step is that your husband needs to talk to his mom. This is the strategy. He should not push it aside. Um, and you said something that um, is since it's not impacting my, your husband is not around and he's not feeling the impact as much. But he should initiate it in terms of initiating it and in terms of saying that you need to speak to your mom. This is what we this is what we do. The first spanking is enough is enough or the church to, to spank or the attempt to spank is a time for you to be able to let your mom know in a nice way that we don't hit here. This is our style. She's not going to live with you guys forever. I think is I don't think this, when they say this mother-in-law, father-in-law, this, 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 I, I think that is, is the approach uh, people have. When a mother-in-law, a father-in-law comes into a house and they see husband and wife united, it's difficult for them to break in. It's difficult for them to go against it. It's difficult. I have parents, my wife has parents, well, she doesn't have now, but I still have one parent. And when they come and they see the way the house is, you know, there's a way you will keep yourself and the way you will you'll be united with your spouse. They can't take a major decision without asking you. And so what will your husband say concerning this or what will your wife say, depending on each, um, whichever case. But the man should first of all talk to his mother and say, we are not doing this, uh, we're not, we're not, we're not flogging. When you say a no violence approach, I mean, I, I want to believe that you're not spanking or you're flogging or caning like we do here um, in Africa and Nigeria. That is the plan of your, that is the plan, except your husband was not with you in that plan. It's very important that husband and wife have buy-in in their decision because then what it means is that two of them are taking this stand. And it's just a gentle way to say, ah, mommy, no, that this, this, and this is what we do. This is what we do. It is you as the parent or parents that, that will determine the, 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 the style or the model you want to use to train your child and not your parents. Parents, I believe there are more like advisory role. But when you take a stand, two of you take a stand, then it becomes easier. Your husband should do the first talking. I want to believe that your husband should be the first, do the first talking in terms of, mommy, this is how we do it. Then definitely, since you are around more, your mother-in-law will be able to ask you, so 
Uh, she will want to know more. And maybe she will want to ask the, the, the son, she will ask you, then that is the time that you have the opening to be able to tell her, we don't spank here. In this country, we, we don't spank. I believe you will have many excuses um, not to spank a child in, when living in the US. Whether you spank, we here we believe um, in a little bit of spanking, but we are not the parents. It's not, it's not my place to be able to determine what model that you use, but this is what you do. It works for some people. It has been working. So why not? If it's, if it's okay, fine, go ahead and, and do it. But she doesn't have to come and change it because the, he's four years old. By the time he's getting to six, seven, some of those things are sticking to him. And so I don't think anybody altering the training, the plan you have for a child, I think is a serious thing. Um, I think it's very serious for somebody to come and alter um, the life, um, the, the plan. And, no, I, I, and I think you need to, if your husband is not um, around most of the time, when he comes, I, I think you need to, to talk, you guys need to talk this over. Um, um, you need to, he needs to set boundaries with his mom, he needs to set that boundaries. And two of you in a lighter mood, we jokingly let her know that this is what you people want. I want to believe that your mother-in-law is reasonable and she will understand that this thing is what you guys have decided to do. Um, when the, the front, for me, every challenge is an opportunity for, for, is an opportunity for you to come up with solution or is an opportunity for you to solve an existing problem. So I think in terms of unity, in terms of unity, you and your husband need to have a common, you know, a, a lot of these mistakes happen in marriage, in marriages where you just tell your spouse something, your spouse says, okay, but he doesn't really have a buy-in to it. He might think something different. And because the situation hasn't um, come up, um, it, it is not something um, that you will notice until that time. Maybe he too has his own reservations about um, maybe there's a reservation somewhere you don't know, but this issue will bring out exactly what you guys need to do concerning this. So I don't see, I don't see it as much as a challenge. I see it as every challenge that you meet in life is an opportunity for you to scale in life, is an opportunity for you to make amends. This is four years. This child is four years. This has come. Just the way that when he starts school, something else might come that your husband, you and your husband need to sit down and say, okay, this is, this is what we need to do. So it's not a problem. Um, your son is still four years old. There's still a long time for this, um, the, this uh, um, for a lot of things to be amended in terms of spanking. You don't want it. You don't want it. Let your husband be the first voice then you, in a subtle way, will be able to explain to her that this is what you want. The, the spouse that has the parent in question should be the first to always talk to their parents to set the mood and say, mommy, this is not how we do it. This is not how we want to do it. She might, obviously, I've, I've not seen any, um, any, any parents that will agree with you the way um, that, that will agree with you the way you want to train your child. I've not seen. Every time my mom comes to my house and, and you buy something, I, I, as far as she's concerned, you don't know how to price. Uh, they must have cheated you in this. Maybe she would have come to buy it for you. But you can't buy it for me. You can't live in my house and live in your house. Why do you think that somebody will cheat? But those are parents. Those are the things... Those are the things we face. Um, those are the things we face as parents. Um, these are the things we face from our parents, but we should not be deterred in any way or form. Let them know. I believe this, when they see the seriousness um, that you two of you have, perhaps they're not seeing that seriousness. And I think you need to start by speaking to your husband and say, look, this and this is happening. I think we need to take a stand and also hear what he has to say, and you guys can resolve it. I think that the knot was not um, properly tied. 
uh, but this is now the time for you to tighten the knot and for, for you to now say, okay, this is moving forward. This is what we do. Every challenge you meet in marriage is an opportunity for that marriage to be stronger. Every challenge you meet in marriage is an opportunity for that, that, that marriage to be stronger. Every challenge you meet in life is an opportunity for you to scale. For some of us, when you don't, you are not able to, to, to come out of that situation because you've not critically analyzed it. You keep going around in circles. You keep going around in circles. And if it doesn't come out with mother-in-law, it come out with father-in-law, it come out with your husband's siblings, it come out with your wife's sibling, it continues until you develop that wisdom, wisdom that comes from trying to see how you will sort it out. That wisdom is with you. There's a certain level of wisdom that we get when we try to tackle issues. And when you have a problem, as soon as that problem is over, there's an experience you get from that. That experience is to handle the next thing. Because if you don't use that experience, you're going to have that same issue. Dress in another thing, dress in another form. So, um, Shemu, I think you, it's, I think it's okay. I think um, whatever situation is an opportunity for two of you to come together. I think it's a call for unity, a call for more bonding, a call for more understanding, a call for a retreat, a call for something that has to be some form of retreat, some form of um, um, discussion between you and your husband. And when these talks go on, you realize that you people come closer and become closer and, and become a formidable team that no father, mother, brother, sister can break in because you guys already have that, that team. You guys already have become a formidable, a, a tightly knit team. And I think this is an opportunity. Look at it in this way that is an opportunity for husband and wife to come. I don't see it as much as, um, I don't see it as much as a problem. Um, I say you can talk to anybody, any, anybody, anywhere. You can talk to them as long as you do it respectfully. As long as you use the sandwich method, as long as you know, there's nothing you cannot say to people in authority, to parents, depending on how you say it. It's just about how you say it. It's just about how resp respectfully you push your, your thoughts and gradually be firm, but subtle in making sure they see, this child is my responsibility. During your own time, whatever you told me to do, I did. This is my time. And she needs to respect that. However, I want to do it. This is our own. We know what you don't know. We have an idea of something you don't. And this is how we want to bring out this child. It doesn't matter if she comes back to Nigeria and say, you people are, are not training your child. Well, it doesn't matter. You don't need the approval of man. You need the approval of God that gave you those kids for you to be able um, to train them. And God has given you those kids. And that's all that matters. Because the person that you're going to, um, that you're going to uh, be accountable to is God that gave you those kids. So as long as inside of you, you know what you're doing is right and you stand your ground, after a while, parents, I've seen difficult parents crumble to the, the firmness of their kids. They beat you, they talk, they do everything, but this is what I want. This is my life. This is what you guys I cannot be chatting about beating a slap at this age. But what I'm telling you is that once you're firm and in a certain way continue to push that, she has no other choice but to toe the line. And I think that that needs to happen until, because the training of the child is not, is not in her care. Except you're telling me you brought your mother-in-law to help in nanny services so that you can go to work. That is a different matter. But even at that, if that is true, also what it means is that you determine how you want your child to be trained. It's as simple as that. Um, so I, this, is, this is my take on it. It's a call for unity, for talk, 
for retreat, let your husband do the first talking, then you can follow up later in trying to buttress everything. Um, and as long as you put it nicely, this is what you people are doing. And don't expect that she's going to listen, take what you say the first time. She's going to complain and complain and be saying things, but gradually she will come to realize that husband and wife want this. And this is opportunity for husband and wife to be, um, to come closer in handling issues. You become comrades after a while um, because of the issues you go through. Sometimes I look at my wife and I'll call, call her comrade wife. Do you know what we've gone through? We've gone through a lot. Um, so there's a certain aspect of that marriage that make us comrade in terms of attacking the th things that come to attack us, attack the marriage, attack our kids, attack our destiny, our, our work and all those things. So when you become united in fighting those battles um, together, it's like your comrades. And I think this is one of them and it brings unity, unity, foster unity and, and it makes it better. So look at it as a huddle, um, might be a huge huddle, but you'll be better off um, for it. So Sharon from Maryland, USA, I hope I've been able to help you. This is, um, this is the list. This is uh, two questions I can take this week. Um, I hope to see you next week. Every Monday, uh, I have a webinar in five areas, business, career, leadership, personal finance, and relationship and life issues. If you want to be, I, I invite you, Every Friday, every Monday, sorry, 5 p.m. Um, West African time, I come, I'll be discussing something very um, important. Um, I'll be discussing something very important next uh, um, Monday. Also on Wednesday, also on Wednesday, um, also on Wednesday, I'm back here to answer questions. If you have questions, please just put it out in my DM. I will come out and I will answer you um, I will answer you when I get to, um, when I see your questions next Wednesday, I'll answer you. If you want to reach out to me for coaching, private coaching, I'm also there. Just put it out there in, uh, in, in my DM and I will sure be there to answer you. So I look forward, I invite you to our weekly programs. We have annual events and we have other key events that I will be introducing to you from time to time. So. Um, until then, uh, until Monday, 5 p.m., um, make it a date. I hope to see you 5 p.m. Nigerian time. Also help us share and invite someone, invite somebody to this, you know, um, to come and listen to the things that we do here. If you have questions, put it out there on Wednesday. I'll be back. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you guys. Have a good night, guys.